Okay, so what I'm going to show everybody to do is how to put on both hooks and bars uh, using a domestic sewing machine, and this also works with an industrial sewing machine. Today we're using a Bernina with a free motion foot, but you can also do it with no foot at all. So if you don't have a free motion foot, you just remove the foot, but you need to remember to lower it still so that there's tension on your uh, upper thread. So the stitch we're going to use is a bar tack, and I'll just make a bar tack here in the corner. What that is is width and no length. And I find leaving the feed dogs up helps because it supports the fabric a little bit and I don't get weird knots. So on our Bernina, we made our width very, very wide because we're using a number six hook and bar or a King Henry hook and bar from Richard the Thread in California. And um, to make my bar tack, I've got a very wide width and no length. So we're just making a regular bar tack. And what we've got here, if you can visualize it, is we're pretending this is the back of a bodice. So this pencil line is where my bodice or my trunk or whatever my garment is that's going to hook. The pencil line is where it's going to fold and then hook. So to do this with the machine, you, we like to use an awl, but you can use a bobby pin or a little screwdriver or all sorts of things. But you just need something uh, for the thread to go over and make space. So what I'm, I'm going to try to get my hands out of the way, but I don't want to break a needle. And you'll break a few needles the first time you do this. Uh, so wear your goggles. So we're going to put a bar tack that's just a little bit inside of our center back line. And then we're going to go about a quarter of an inch over and do another bar tack. Then you want to leave the awl in there when you clip your threads, otherwise they'll collapse. So we're going to cl clip our threads. Then you can clip them better when you do this. Then you take the awl out, and the space from the awl allows you to slide in your big hook. And this works for teeny weeny hooks too. You just adjust your bar tack and the space between the bar tacks depending on the size of your hook. Then you can shrink your stitch width a little bit and come back and tack the base and you can tack it in one, two, three, four places, whatever you feel is secure for what you're closing. I like to do those two directions and these directions. This direction, that's better. You know we're live, so the stress is high. You have eight viewers right we now. We have eight viewers. <laughs> Hello, eight viewers. <laughs> then you can tidy everything up, and we don't use a lock stitch. Um, but you can take a little bit of fray check because not everybody's machine has a lock stitch and just put a little dot on the bar tacks on the back. Then what you would want to do is use a matching thread that matches the back of your bodice and to make sure that the hooks are recessed just a tiny bit and never show, uh, we like to have a bar tack that goes through all the layers. So on the outside you have just this little tiny dimple of a bar tack, but it's much more attractive uh, than the top of the hook sticking out when it's closed. And you can put a dot of fray check on that too. So that's a hook and bar with the machine, or that's a hook with the machine, and the bars are a lot easier. Um, and if you use uh, this type of bar, you'll see that there's a little tiny opening in it. Mm -hmm. They stay better if you put this little tiny opening towards the back because the hook would be pulling this this direction so we don't want the opening opposite that so you if you think that the opening in the bar goes to the opening of the garment it'll stay on there better and I'm going to shrink my zigzag width just a tiny bit and we're also going to bar tack this on and you you know if you've got good sturdy thread in your machine you don't have to do a ton of passes you, you kind of want a comparable amount of passes to you would if you were using hand sewing thread. Another great thing about this is if you have to take them off or remove them, it's much easier to pop off a bar tag than it is to uh, try to chop out everybody's mysterious little knots that make no sense. Mm -hmm. So we just went on all three sides of that and we're going to do the same thing and go on all three sides of this. And in all my years at the 
several big ballet companies I've worked at, surprisingly, we've never had a hooker bar come off put on this way. And they're easy to remove. There we go. And I didn't break a needle. Or swear. I didn't swear. <laughs> Can you believe it? But it's all right to swear. It helps. And you can trim that all up and then again on the inside if you want put just a tiniest little bit of fray check so that those uh, stitches never come undone voila voila thank you for joining us live <laughs> look at our shop mm -hmm. we're live we've got a class going on somebody's hiding that's all right that's maxine she's from australia she doesn't want to be filmed <laughs> <laughs> We have Rick making a gravy boat, a very fabulous gravy boat. Can we practice? Are you? Trish is working on some tambour. Say something in your Australian accent. Hi there. <laughs> and Louie. And you can try He's just hanging out. He manages everybody. He wishes it was Friday. See you. Thank you for watching our video.